Hey again, it's Clinton. I am back with Destiny, and today we're talking about the Iron Banner 2.0. This event just wrapped up yesterday. It was Bungie's second iteration of the Iron Banner, which started uh, early last week. And I'm just here to share some impressions and collect some thoughts about my experience playing the Iron Banner throughout the week. And the first thing I like to start off with is the very high level of competition in the Iron Banner. My goodness, everyone was going for it, everyone had their A game. Uh, in this sense, Iron Banner 2.0 really felt like the ultimate test of skill in Destiny, where it's your own player skill combined with the character skill. And by that I mean the overall progression of your character in, its, uh, in the way you've upgraded your weapons and your gear. All that stuff comes into play and it really did feel uh, different from standard Crucible. Another thing to note was the marked difference of grouping up and coordinated teamwork. Uh, organized fire teams of skilled players definitely showed off the difference that sort of teamwork makes. And I can't tell you how many times I received the thrashing at the hands of some of these uh, organized clans. Uh, even even on teams where you know maybe three or four of the players on the team were uh, of the same clan, you could tell really noticeable the teamwork made a huge difference. Watching uh, these guys work together was really uh, really amazing. And even though I was beaten by many of these players, it was really uh, a, a pleasure to see them work and get some few tips along the way. Um, yeah, sure uh, the difficulty of the Iron Banner, especially for uh, an average PvP player like myself, it did feel like a meat grinder at times. I didn't really dig too much into it until maybe about the weekend it was really when I got to invest some time into it. And sure, the difficulty curve was very high, uh, but overall at the end of it, I, I feel like that it made me a better player and improved my PvP IQ improved my aim drastically, especially when I, I just used the Hawk Moon as my primary for the entire event. So that really put a lot of pressure on me to up my game and uh, definitely improve my aim for sure. And uh, yeah, uh, something I'll talk about later is that you know there's the medallion system. Every time you lose a game, you actually didn't get any um, reputation points. What you would do, you would collect the medallion and you could have up to five of these medallions that you could cash in as soon as you won a match. So this uh, encouraged people to stick it out if they were on the losing side. And it really felt good to you know, have like a two or three game lose streak and finally on that fourth game you, you make good on it and you cash out your medallions. And the overall result would be you know, not quite as much as getting, you know, four wins in a row, but you do get something for the time you invested into those losing matches anyway. On to the next a major topic was the uh, tempered buff uh, item that they had available at Lord Saladin. Now, when I initially heard about the tempered buff, it, they made it sound like it was an item that players, you know, players who didn't have the time to play the Iron Banner every day could buy this thing and they could catch up. It would provide a percentage boost uh, to you uh, in reputation, right? But it was pretty much available to everyone and you could buy it. Uh, basically, it would last for 12 hours as soon as you bought it. And so at every 12 hours, you could buy a new uh, tempered buff. I don't know what to call it. It's not a medallion. It's like a coin or just something. And for each uh, progressive day of the end banner, that uh, buff bonus, the, the percentage gain, would increase by about 10%, I think. So uh, what, you, what would happen if, if you never played the iron banner until the very last day, the, the boost you get from the tempered buff would be quite substantial. 
But what struck me as odd was anyone could just buy this. So if you're playing every single day, you would just there's a no-brainer. There's no decision to be made. You would just make sure to buy this at the tower before hanging out into matchmaking. So and it it costs one mote of light to buy. So initially I was like, well, why don't you just activate it for every single player, All right? Uh, since for sure everyone's gonna pick it up. Uh, then, then I saw that it cost a mode of light, and I was like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. They, they want to create a little mode of light sync with this event. I'm sure many players out there have been accumulating these modes of light. There aren't a lot of ways to spend it, to be honest. There's Zur once a week, and then there's the speaker, who just sells uh, class items and emblems. So honestly, I don't really see people splurging their modes of light on him. So this was a clever way for them to actually encourage people to spend away their motes of light, kind of get that get that drain going for that form of currency. Then people would be motivated to go out and play the other game types, earn back that stuff that they spent on the tempered buff. So very clever on their part. Uh, in the future, you know, I would like to see them experiment with just making this tempered buff available to you. If really you had been away from the Iron Banner for at least 24 hours, uh, then it would be uh, more meaningful. You know, uh, someone who had been not playing the Iron Banner for X number of days would get that real boost compared to someone who'd been grinding away nonstop, right? Another thing to consider with the Temper Buff is yes, they could take that idea, it's a good idea, and they could actually translate that into. Uh, something else so they could offer a subset of items that you could only get as a random drop during the iron banner and in order to increase your likelihood of getting this drop you would buy some kind of item that lasts 12 hours that would give you an x percentage increase chance of getting these drops on that would be something really uh, uh, appealing for someone who, for anyone really, whether you were playing the Iron Banner a lot, hardcore every day, or someone who just dip in every so often like myself. So that is something that I would like to see them implement in the future. If they, if they really want to spice up this Iron Banner event, assuming they have more uh, Iron Banner, which I think they will. Uh, another thing um, I want to cover was the overall balance of uh, play. Uh, I was a level 28 for the entire event, a level 28 hunter, and I did feel the level and gear differences in very subtle ways, uh, and that was, I think, a pretty good balance that they struck. Um, you know, when I was killed by a lower level guy, say a level 20 or, you know, a level 26 or something, it didn't feel like it was unfair. I didn't feel wrong. Uh, it felt proper. Uh, I could say that, oh, maybe I was injured and he just came around to finish me off. Or the level 20 guy had a, a very upgraded uh, exotic weapon, like an invective or something. And it just felt, okay, it made sense. It didn't feel like I was cheated out of anything. On the other side, um, I found it very difficult to take down a level 30 Titan, for example. Those guys would have a huge amount of defense. And um, armor was really, you know, defense, armor, that, that sort of stuff really factored in. Uh, so many times I felt like I'd finished off the guy with a shot or a melee, only to see, you know, just like a pixel width of health left on their meter. And then that was enough time for them to just kill me and I was so close to killing someone but it's that little bit of health that and that was definitely helped along by the fact that they had slightly better armor uh, defense or my um, well my my weapons were fully upgraded uh, my Hawkman was fully upgraded so it's a very slight difference it wasn't some uh, totally unbalanced thing where I felt like only the players who are level 30 with the best weapons were getting any kills and I think it also gave me a new appreciation for the uh, general balance of regular crucible play. So it's it's what how should I say they they really listen to the community. 
uh, in fixing their um, uh, their balance with the Iron Banner. Um, you know, I never played the first time around, but I read enough stuff about it to really get the sense that it was a bit of a, a gong show. So what they have here is a pretty good mix of like, yes, ultimately you need player skill to uh, advance and to uh, win any matches, but uh, ensuring that you have the best possible equipment and have it upgraded to its maximum will see you through is that little extra, you know, 10% that you need to gain that advantage, right? And that's how it should be. And uh, just to wrap things up, uh, i just like to say that uh, Iron Banner 2.0, I think events like this are good for Destiny. Uh, pri uh, provides players with options to get those uh, raid level type of gear outside of the Volta Glass. Previously, people felt like they were just grinding that raid over and over again uh, to no real end. Uh, they were just hoping for the uh, RNG gods to bless them with the, 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 the raid boots or something. But here, they provided for a limited time a way for players to just stretch out and do something a little different rather than doing the raid over and over again. So I applaud them for that. And another thing is that it shows Bungie is community focused. They listened to the player feedback from last time and they pretty much improved, improved the Iron Banner in every conceivable way. Uh, to, for me, the Iron Banner became appointment gaming. It, it forced me or it encouraged me to group up with people in my clan who I don't normally play together all that much with it uh, really uh, made me uh, focus on grinding, grinding for that gear uh, even though I only got the boots uh, it really made me uh, give give purpose to my uh, PvP play um, and in general uh, the Iron Banner 2.0 uh, paints a very rosy picture for future events makes me look forward to the to what other events Bungie has planned the uh, Queen's Wrath and Iron Banner 1.0 feel like very distant memories now. And uh, one final note is the timing of the event. Uh, the Iron Banner 2.0 launched the same week as some big releases in gaming such as Dragon Age, Inquisition, and Far Cry 4. Uh, it's right in the middle of the holiday gaming season, so that you know created a, a weird problem where my attention was divided in so many different ways it's also very close to the launch of the Dark Below expansion the way I see it if these events are gonna be this quality I don't feel bad about this counter programming I will keep playing and I encourage Bungie to keep up their good work so that's it for me thanks so much for watching I will see you all uh, next time ciao